put some stone in the form the side of the house for the garden right. and across the front. Put too many beams up on the front for the front floor. Yes. More or less up in the shed. Grandpa's house, have they done anything like that? That you noticed? <laughs> not, not much. They did some inside, right? A little bit, but they, right. they like it the way it right. Yeah. Now, so they, nice house. And um, they haven't, you know, they just can't. So the gardens have kind of let go a little bit, you know, that they don't. But they, they're, they're such nice kids. Right. They're really young. They're really they're younger, younger, right? They're how much? Oh, wow. Yeah. Way younger. I think they're getting, I think they're getting married. But they're good neighbors. They love the place. Great picture. Yeah, they're clear.
Saturday's dad. Oh, uh, no. There are some pictures in there. I've seen them. But they were told they were Right. Never got to meet his father. Really?
Good morning. It's so good to see so many out. Um, quite impressed. This is a tight knit family, and uh, pretty amazing all the good pictures you've had through the years. Back when Eric was a uh, '80s kid with his his hot car right there. He never told me about all that. So. But uh, anyway, I'm Pastor Norwood, uh, <clears throat> retired at the step down in June. We've got Pastor John Reeves, is now a pastor, former missionary of our church. <clears throat> and uh, I've been working with Zach and Eric for the last 10 years, I would say. <clears throat> it's been a real pleasure. And being family, a real pressure as well. Brother Reeves is going to come open in prayer and read the obituary if you will. No, on the behalf of our church, Grace Paul Baptist Church, that uh, you are in our hearts and prayers and in your time of grief and loss. This time, let us, let us open our service in prayer. <clears throat> Dearly Father, we thank you for the life of, of Eric Scott Peel. Lord, I pray that his family and church family may receive your comfort and grace this morning and in the days ahead. Lord, as it says in the scriptures, Lord, blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abound by Christ. Lord, I'm thankful for this comfort that we can have through you. Lord, we know how much Eric loved his family and you. We are thankful that we know where he is at. He's with you, and one day we'll see him again. And to my fellow Marine, I say Semper Fidelis, Lord, may everything that is said and done here today glorify your holy and precious name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'll read some things about the life of Eric Peel. <clears throat> Eric Scott Pill was born in Flint, Michigan on April 8, 1965, to Bernice and Louis Pill. He was the youngest brother to Michael and Cheryl. Eric accepted the Lord as his Savior when he was a young boy and later rededicated his life to the Lord. He enlisted in the Marines and went to boot camp right out of high school and served four years from 83 to 87. He was stationed in Okinawa, Japan, and Keineho, Hei, Bay, Hawaii. After the military, he spent the next 20 years as a truck driver, driving all over the United States and Canada. It was his truck driving career that began his journey of health issues. He did not let it slow down his life or witness or his witness to the Lord. He had many passions, and one was his son, Zachary Pill. The only thing he loved more than his family and son was witnessing to others. That took many forms, like working with the teenagers in St. Louis area. Of course, one of the young men is with us here this morning. Mm -hmm. In teaching men's Bible study class at Victory Mission, passing out smiley face cards at uh, parades, and to anyone he came in contact with, working with young children in the Iwana program and junior church, plus witnessing to fellow patients and medical staff in the hospitals and nursing homes he was in. Eric passed peacefully on August 29, 2024, with his last breath and no pain or suffering, he looked up to heaven with tears of joy and walked into the presence of the Lord. Even with all his health issues, he was able to be an organ donor 
which was important to him, and he would urge you to strongly consider doing the same. But most importantly, he would not he would want you to, to accept the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, so that you too can know the blessing and joy, hope and peace of eternal salvation. Eric is survived by his son Zachary Pill, and also his brother, sister, aunts, and uncle, nieces, nephews, cousins, and their families. Okay. At this time, Brother Glennie Gray will lead us in a song from him. In the uh, underneath side of the pew in front of you is a hymnal if you will turn to 194 and stand with us as we sing when we all get to heaven. <laughs> Yes. 
uh, so much to be said, but and not enough time. <clears throat> I wrote down ten major things. Now, after the lady saying we're going to have you, if you would like to pass the microphone around, you can give a testimony, see the understanding of a testimony, what Eric meant to you in your life, also, because, you know, that'd be your last chance to, to say something kind and good about your old friend, <laughs> Brother Peter. Number one, we met about 10 years ago here in the church. Uh, he and Zachary, where he was like 15 then, and uh, came through the door. And uh, secondly, I wrote, Eric was doing Bible lessons at Victory Mission, uh, for almost as many of you know, that, that was like how many years? About four years he did that. And uh, well, <clears throat> they had to, they changed the format and asked him not to come back. Number three, we talked a lot on the phone about every uh, two to four weeks he would call me. And when he was able to come to church, after church we'd go down here to Wendy's and spend time in a little party time, right? And he would kind of ventilate and unload and, and just to get out in public. And uh, when he called, especially, uh, we always see uh, Eric, Eric on the phone there, his name and number, and I said, well, it must be serious because he didn't just call and waste time. Uh, but he wanted answers to biblical theology questions uh, <clears throat> and answers, and he wanted uh, update information on the state of America, and uh, also he wanted to know what is, the, what is true to believe in the news nowadays. How many of you know it's worse than that now, now than then? And, uh, well, I tell you what, there's the, there's the active news right there. Yeah. Yeah. Just always go back to that and you'll see exactly where you are in world history. We also, uh, number four I wrote, we talked about the years in St. Charles, Missouri, working in evangelistic work with the youth, track outreaches, and uh, other things. That we talked about the things that gave him joy. He did he talked very little about his uh, service in the Marines. And, uh, but he also brought up, he talked about his Toro lawnmowers. And uh, how many know about the Toro lawnmowers, okay? And his lawn cutting business. He said, yeah, I'm gonna, I think I'll buy one. Come on, cut the church. I said, we don't have that much grass. <laughs> don't to do that. <laughs> but he really always talked about the Toro lawnmowers. And uh, then I talk about, I knew very little about his service as a Marine. He never brought that up. <clears throat> but he was, a, he was a proud veteran for serving his country. Yeah. You knew that, he was a proud veteran mm -hmm. wherever he went. <laughs> so he always talked about his family, always talked about his family. Now take that uh, any way you want to. <laughs> <laughs> And especially his son Zachary and Zachary's future and his spiritual growth and his success. And also he was and is, Zach, all right? He was and he is so proud of his son's achievements so far in this life. Amen. And aren't you proud of Zachary also? What, what a guy. He tells the... Uh, he tells the unqualified to carry handguns, you ain't get one. And then he his brother. Uh, he learned that from the Sheriff's Department in Ozark, that he, he learned to do that. And he, he qualified him to be, a, what do you call it, head on show in the gun department at Bass Pro at 25. That's, that's quite an achievement. Now, great. Eric also, uh, now get this, all of us, Eric would sadly admit that he had caused his health and personal problems by not obeying God's word more closely than he knew what God wanted to do. And I wrote myself a note. We all should be that honest, correct? Which means amen. We should all be that honest. Number nine, his last request was to go, and this was uh, two Tuesdays ago when I took him to the VA, 
And on the way home, he says, take me by McDonald's. Give me a chocolate milkshake. <laughs> and we went through there, and he, he spent like 10 or $12 on a milkshake and a filet. This combo. He said, I haven't had one of these in a long time. And then I was with him Wednesday, and then Zach was with him Wednesday evening, and then everything went south after that. <clears throat> but his number 10, his final mark on our church as a member here. Actually, when when his dad in Canada sent money for a new carpet in the church, the odor from Malgai was so strong, Eric could not come back to church. He could not breathe. So we moved the speaker into the fellowship hall where he could go up there and sit. He wanted to be in church to hear singing and sit back there. When the video was just, just the speaker, he said, I just want to be in church. And so that, that put him out of the auditorium for a while until the odors dissipated. I think he was back two or three times after that. <clears throat> as his health um, was escaping him. But his final mark on our church was the financial gift. When his father passed away, was it last year? Yeah, sure. 2022. And uh, Eric called me up. He said, I want you to come by here. I want to send a gift to the church. And uh, his financial gift to the church uh, did a lot. It wasn't an exorbitant amount, but we're good at stretching copper pennies. We're good at it. Uh, so we got all the ceiling redone and the beams repainted. Uh, we got an apartment built in the basement, shower, uh, nice facilities for our guest chamber for our missionaries and evangelists families that come through here. <clears throat> and also, it, it really did help bring a new pastor uh, in to get settled and help remodel the, the parsonage next door. We got a lot done, but really, we couldn't have done all that as well as we got it done without Eric. Yeah. Hello, here, I got some cash for you. <laughs> and uh, how many know he, uh, you have to be careful if you're going to his apartment, I said, he might have landmines in you know, he was uh, always waiting for somebody to bust through the door so he could let them at it. <laughs> Did y'all find all of his uh, paraphernalia and his gold ingot, ingots and good? They got, got some damage off the back. But he was quite a character. And I, I know the video, I've never seen any of these pictures, and he was quite an active guy, evidently. And uh, highly opinionated. And I really didn't know how opinionated he was until I met Cheryl the other day. And uh, you were his older sister, right? Okay, learn it from you, evidently. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, those are a few of the memories. There's many, many more. And what a privilege it is to meet the family that he loved so much this morning. At this time, we'll have our latest sermon. 